Hi, and welcome to our live Classcraft Master Class, where we spend 30 minutes exploring ways you can make your class more epic. I'm your host and Classcraft Social Media Manager, Karina, and my awesome co-host on this side, sorry, is our in-house teacher slash learning specialist, Hutch. Hi, Hutch. Hi, Karina. How's your uh, face doing? I heard you had a little dentist appointment today. Yeah, let's get the elephant out of the room right away. Um, <laughs> my face is still very frozen from our de my dental appointment this afternoon. They said it would wear off by now, but it hasn't. So, uh, <laughs> so I apologize, everyone, for the half smile. Um, I, I can try propping it up. Usually it's a little nicer than this, um, but just just be kind to me. <laughs> this smile's a little bit rough here, so <laughs> just bear with me, everyone. Um, this also Don't means I might stumble a little. <laughs> I might stumble a bit tonight speaking. I apologize. I will do my absolute best, but you've got Hutch here. You can rely on him um, yes. to speak for both of us. <laughs> there you go. Nothing but professionalism all the way. <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. We're going to so, keep it real serious here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for sharing your time with Hutch and I. Um, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. We are streaming this session live and a replay will be available shortly after. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. We can see you. Uh, also, help us know them. it's working. I can see them in the chat. I can see your comments in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> also, you can give We're us like, a... What? You can help us right now to know that the chat is working um, by just letting us know where you're tuning in, in from. We have uh, Vitor there. Hi, Vitor. Um, joining us from Brazil. Hi. Um, okay. We will do our best to answer all your questions uh, throughout the night. Hi, Sam. Uh, Sam says, hi, Karina and Hutch, two of the greatest. See, this is how we'll interact with you tonight. <laughs> oh, Again. I like Sam. Being nice with my smile here. <laughs> just drop it up. <laughs> um, help us, so we'll be doing our best to answer any questions uh, you may have um, at the end of the session. And throughout, we'll, we'll try to pick up a few questions if we have an opportunity. This session is short, just 30 minutes. If so, if we don't get to your question now, we will follow up as soon as possible. You can come back to the broadcast to check our answers. Um, you'll also find links or resources that are mentioned during this session in the chat. And you can access these at any time on our Facebook group, Classcraft Educator Community. So please pop on over and give us a join. Um, we'd love to have you there. If you're catching this replay, please leave a comment and let us know what you thought of it. Um, no comments about the smile. <laughs> these <laughs> sessions are designed to give you great info and tips to make your classroom even more awesome than it is so please don't be shy to ask away and share your thoughts as we go and we'll just take a moment just to say hi to everybody who's popping in john mike john from let's see is that michigan um so tara from tara's clicking in we've got pete from san diego janice from maine maylene hi maylene uh, David from West Michigan. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. So with all that little housekeeping and a quick little welcome and again, propping up my smile out of the way, <laughs> let's, our class on quests is now officially in session. All right, Hutch. So let's start <laughs> with talking about what are quests? What are quests? Okay. So Thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, and uh, hopefully this is some fun, helpful time for you here. So Quest, I used them with my kids for three years and I absolutely love them. And I feel that now that many of us are in a hybrid or remote learning situation, Quests are an absolute lifesaver. This is a picture, oh, oh I'm sharing my screen and, but my, I need my amazing, uh, there we go. Like Karina has all the magic. Uh, so now you are magically being shown what a class craft quest looks like to us as the teacher. It is a lesson plan that is going to be a lesson plan for a unit. It might last a full chapter of a textbook or a week or two weeks of a learning topic. It's an essentially an entire learning cycle from learning a new content or skill, practicing that, and then being assessed on it, and the quest is over. Your quest to learn that topic is done, and then your students would move on to another quest within your Classcraft 
class. Um, this is the view that we get as a teacher. We get to pick a map. So here we have, we have a bunch of different maps. We have this map, the floating islands. Then we get to put on the map locations. We're going to call those locations objectives. Say it with me. Objectives. You're very good. Way to go. Objectives. <laughs> Thank you, Karina. <laughs> Ta so these are going to be objectives. Each of these green outlined circles is an objective. And the objective at the top left that has a, an icon of a house inside is always going to be where your students are going to begin. They do not get to see the full quest like we do. They don't see this view. So there's no confusion about where they should start. And there's some pretty cool stuff that happens where like they have to reveal more of the map as they go. That's going to bring in, this is kind of their view. They would start at the introduction. They'd They'd see what's inside there, and then they'd get open up the next part. And so they're kind of revealing more of the map as they go through your lesson. What's inside when they look inside one of those, when they click on one of those circles, there's two screens. The first screen that will take up their whole screen is a story screen, like you see here on the left. This can be, like you see here, it can be art and story that's going to use the power of narrative to get them excited about going on an adventure. So now you're not just learning math, you're going on an adventure to learn math and you're going to discover how to unlock the secrets of this tower that's just risen up out of the island. And then once you like capture their attention with some story, then, then they go on to the task tab and you can see on the right here, this is an example of what their screen will look like when they're on the task tab. And you can put a YouTube video in here that will just live right in Classcraft. That's what this is here. You can put in text and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that tonight. And then as they make their way, through your lesson, we as the teacher, we're going to need to be able to monitor their progress. We're going to we're going to allow them to be turning things in. We're going to need to give them feedback on those things. And all of that can happen right here within the overview tab. This is on the teacher side of things. So we're kind of like in the on the teacher side of things, we're kind of like in the back end of our quests. We have all of our different circles. Here's a mini map where we can see where all the circles are laid out on our map. But then here's just a nice orderly list of those objectives and then the fun little names we've given to them. And you can see I'm clicked in American Square here. And inside American Square, here are the four students that I have that are currently at this point in the quest or beyond it. And I can see that if they've turned things in, like Christopher has turned something in late, Kareem has turned something in on time, and Anne and Sarah have not yet turned anything in. I can also see that I can leave feedback to my students. So Kareem, I've left feedback for him. I have not left feedback yet for Christopher because there's no little feedback button there. So it's pretty cool. We can also have Classcraft automatically give students rewards for completing these learning tasks which is going to make it very cohesive within an ecosystem of motivation within Classcraft. So their rewards are going to be points like experience points or gold pieces, which are going to go right into their avatar that they use in our class for everything else. And then when that avatar levels up from those experience points, then they can buy in-game rewards with their gold pieces. So, and this will do it automatically for you. All you have to do is know how to set it up. And so kind of tonight's goal is to show you how to get set up. And I'm going to do it in, hopefully, uh, in 10 minutes live. So you can build a week's worth of questing for all your students to experience in 10 minutes at home. Um, and then once we see this tonight, we're going to be coming back to quests in future uh, master classes because there's a lot of really cool things that can happen. For example, you can personalize learning experiences if you kind of take your quest to the next level. You can allow your students to have choice where they can choose paths to go. Here at this lightning strikes twice objective, when a student finishes the task inside there, like learning the multiplication table, they could choose maybe to go and do extra practice drills if they don't feel super confident, or they could take a shortcut right to this to the town and engage in a project where they're going to put together a, a presentation that will teach the class. Um, and uh, it's really cool to offer students kind of these side quests, if you will, these side tasks, 
because it's fun to watch as a teacher which students are going to choose to do that. And because they can earn more points in Classcraft for doing these like more things, I was very surprised to see which of my students actually went and voluntarily chose to do quote unquote more work because it doesn't feel like work. It feels like uh, like a game, like you're lear like learning is fun and I'm getting rewards for doing this right as soon as I finish it from Classcraft. So um, it's really cool. You can also structure this and we're gonna learn this in a future master class to where it's teacher choice, where if a student displays their learning here about the multiplication table, you can set it up so that you as the teacher can choose to send them over to a side path for extra supports or if they don't need those supports, you can get you can uh, push them right on to the next part of the lesson to have them learn how to teach the class. And confidentiality is a big important thing when you're supplying these supports. So students that are sent along a side path, they will actually never see that there was a shortcut. And students that are sitting along the shortcut, they will never see that there was a side path. So unless they're having very specific questions about very specific things in their quests, uh, you're never gonna have a situation where students are um, feeling like, oh, my teacher gave me extra work because I don't know what I'm doing or whatever. But, um, and, <laughs> and I did this with, for three years, I used branching pathways like this to provide extra supports and, um, and it never had any any trouble. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited to share this with you tonight. Um, and one big time saver that we're going to be looking at, the, re the reason why I'm going to be able to build a quest in 10 minutes is because I'm going to capitalize upon pre-built quests that come from Classcraft. So we have actually... Um, had professional story writers on staff, and they have taken the world of Classcraft and fleshed it out into this big epic long story that can unfold across your entire course, across the entire 36 week school year. And um, we've broken that story into bite sized pieces of story and art, and then put those into quests. And we've made all the quests short enough that even if you're using Classcraft on a free account, you can still use these quests. So I'm gonna show you how to use these quests that are already pre-built with story and art inside. And um, just to throw this on top of things, you know, social emotional learning is a big deal right now, especially with a mental health crisis uh, on our kiddos um, from you know, the pandemic and, and all this isolation they're experiencing. And these stories were written with uh, social emotional learning competencies in mind, specifically the CASEL, C-A-S-E-L, CASEL, uh, social emotional learning competencies um, were, uh, they, are, they are specially integrated into the story as it unfolds. And we've, we're just finishing touches on building out an entire social emotional learning curriculum uh, that capitalizes on the story as well. Okay, so I love this quote from Picasso, where good artists can copy, great artists steal, and I'm gonna show you how to be a great artist with quests uh, and to steal uh, what we are gladly offering you <laughs> uh, for free. So we're gonna head over to the Classcraft Marketplace, and in the Marketplace, uh, we're gonna be able to find all kinds of cool stuff that uh, we're gonna get into in a future masterclass on how to really get the most out of the marketplace. But what I wanna get out of the marketplace is the beginning of our story mode. And so I'm gonna head there now. Uh, Karina, as I'm moving on over there, are there any uh, questions or anything that's popped up that we wanna chat yeah. about? Uh, well, first of all, I'm just gonna share this. Oh, give me one second. I'm going to share this lovely comment here. Ooh, lovely um, comments. Janice. I love lovely comments. Here we go. <laughs> Janice says, I love the fact that you can create a lesson or unit within quests where students have scaffolding and can press can progress at their pace, earning as they go. Exactly. That's what we love about yeah. it. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> love it. For to use a cultural term, you know, we talk about binge watching now with all the streaming services. And um it, it was kind of like if you if you put your curriculum into multiple quests and you just have those accessible to your students, 
they can binge learn your content. Like if if they get super motivated or they just have a really motivated night, they could they could move their way through like multiple quests um, and just then they could just be sitting on all of their assignments just like they're done. And um, it's a pretty cool feeling for the students to feel like they're ahead. It's a pretty cool thing to see as a teacher, to see students turning things in early um, and to see them motivated. I, I can't say enough. <laughs> for sure. it. I loved it. And there's, right, a, else before we, uh, yeah, there's this question really in from Pete. This is a really good question, Pete. Pete. So students can't see other students where they go, even team members. Yes, correct. Uh, actually, let me uh, let me show you what it looks like um, really quickly. We have a few minutes that I can do that. So, um, inside your inside your 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 teacher homepage here, your team teacher homepage. These are your class cards, and then you'll have your demo class. Everyone has a demo class. It either lives down here or at the top right, depending on when you created your Classcraft account. So, if you go in your demo class then you will be able to view the platform from a student's perspective because all of the students in your roster here in your demo class, they're not real human students. They're just digitally created, randomly generated students. So I can view the platform from Silas Slifer's perspective here by clicking on view a student. And let's take a look at what a quest looks like. And I would encourage you to do this if you are in a Classcraft account, make a free one right now and just, just go in and use a demo class and, and check it out. So um, here's, here's the student dashboard. This is what students see. And then on the left, we have this little kind of map with a waypoint icon sitting on it. And you hover over it, it says Quest. Let's click on that. And here is um, our world map. We can at the bottom right, we can hit the minus button and zoom out. And we see the whole Classcraft world with three different islands in the ocean. There's a tower that's rising up in the middle of them. And then there's a floating set of islands. There's also this big banner that says, start your intro quest to learn how to play Classcraft. This will persist to be here for students until they've actually finished their intro quest. It's a quest that introduces them to Classcraft, to experience points, to gold pieces, to health, uh, health points and powers and teammates and kudos. So they learn all the things in Classcraft and it takes some of the pressure off your shoulders as the teacher, feeling like you have to know how to explain things to them. It also, along the way, they learn by doing, they learn how to progress through a quest simply by progressing through this quest. Um, and then for most accounts that you create, you'll find, you may find like a free quest just hanging out in there just so you can see it. So the great multiplier is in a lot of, uh, teachers accounts once you create it. And, and so let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to click in as a student. And the first thing that happens is remember, they're not going to see the full map. They're not going to have any confusion about how to get started. So there's some story here. Once upon a time, the great wizard Mathematicus was mixing together numbers in his lab, spewing noxious purple gases everywhere. And then, uh, you know, so we're obviously we're moving into some kind of mathematical fun story here. We're going to start the quest. And now we've been to the introduction and now we have lightning strikes twice just blinking at us. We can go back to anywhere we want to, but see here there where I click into lightning strikes Christ as a student. And it's just, it's very simple. It's not going to show me other students. It's not going to show me other students' progress. I'm not going to get distracted by that. I'm just looking at what my teacher wants me to do. And so I got some more story. The story continues. I click continue. Now here's our task. And we're just going to do something real simple. Just le read lesson one of chapter six. You can attach a PDF. Like maybe your uh, textbook, you can attach that chapter six as a PDF and then click it and view it here. And then you can, as a teacher, you can provide them an assignment tab like this. Here, the communication is very important, especially in remote. So all of this is communicated to the student right in front of their face. Here's the rewards you'll get. If here's your due date. Here's feedback from your teacher. Your teacher hasn't left any feedback yet. And that's because I haven't turned anything in yet. Now I have this text box. I have all these cool ways that I can format and different things I can put into that text box. Or I can just drop a file from my computer to turn something in. So let's say like I have this worksheet and I'm just going to turn it in. I can just drag and drop. And now it's attached. And then I can say, here is my worksheet. Oh, yeah. 
here is her is my view. I can save the draft and come back to it later if I'm not done working, um, or I can just click submit. And once I submit as a student, I can't make changes because we don't want students to turn something in and then not maybe maybe don't like the grade or feedback they get, and then they change it, they turn something else in, and then it's a he said he said she said kind of situation with the teacher and the student. We don't want to put you in that situation, so we let them know right away. Hey, if you want to make changes. You, they're going to need to do the save draft. But if they're done, they're done. Then submit and submit. And then as the teacher, if you want to give them another shot, totally go for it. If you don't like what they turned in, tell them that in the feedback. And you can unsubmit what they turned in. And then they have a whole other shot at it. Um, you can also provide discussions here. And so this is what a discussion looks like. It's the only place, a word of warning, it's the only place in all of a Classcraft class where a student can write something that other students can immediately see. Okay, so just be aware of the discussions. And you'll have a different discussion in every part of your quest if you put a discussion in every part of your quest. So another thing to be aware of. Um, but students, if they click more, they have all the same formatting options here in the discussion. Here I can see that my classmate Abel has already written something two hours ago. I can reply to Abel here. Um, I can actually participate in kind of classroom management as a student by flagging a comment from my teacher to see and say that I, I feel like this is an inappropriate thing and my teacher can then get that notification. Um, so so that's, that's the discussion thread. Okay, and then we see that since I turned something in, the next part of the quest open up. And this how, that's how it works. Like kids get some story, they see the task, uh, no assignment tab here, but a discussion tab to have a discussion here. And then I can say I'm done with this task and open up the next part. You can situate it like this quest where students can move through at their own pace. So as soon as they're done with something, they can click done and the next part opens. Or if you'd like, you can situate it so that students can't just open up the next part at their own pace. You can make them wait for you to green light them to open up the next part. And you can do that on an individual objective basis. What I mean by that is lightning strikes twice, this objective could be self-paced. And as soon as they learn the multiplication table, they can go on to memorize, memorize. But maybe you want to stop them there so that you can really assess whether they're getting it. And so you make memorize, memorize, not self-paced, and then they have to wait on you to approve what they turn in here to open up the next part to see the to the town part. Um, so it's completely customizable and amazing for remote learning. And we build it. Well, I didn't build it, but <laughs> our Classcraft devs built this well before, obviously, well before COVID. And um, it's just become such a powerful thing for, for remote learning. So. That's what it looks like on the student side. Let's get back out of here and um, and let's get to where we're gonna build a build a quest in 10 minutes. So um, a couple of things to throw at you here so you know what I'm doing, what I'm working with. First of all, um, I'm not gonna be creating my lesson plan in building a quest in 10 minutes. I have my lesson plan ready to go. So this is for you teachers who are already, you got your lesson plan, you know what you want to teach. You just need a way to put it into an organized presentation that's fun and engaging that'll give kids points for going through it. That's the quest. That's what I'm going to do in 10 minutes. So here's my lesson plan. This is actually not my lesson plan. This is a lesson plan that um, our former head of learning team at Classcraft, Eric Davis, um, used in a previous webinar. And uh, it comes from the Global Citizenship Experience Lab School in Chicago, Illinois. It's an amazing lesson about water awareness. And I taught science classes for 16 years. So I absolutely love, <laughs> absolutely love this lesson plan. So I'm going to be pulling stuff from that. I've got it ready to go here. And then I also am going to have my students as part of the lesson, they're going to watch this YouTube video. I'm going to show you how to put a YouTube video directly into your quest. Um, it could not be much easier than it is. And then over here, I've got pictures that are going to provide like a lot of the text and a lot of um, 
those stuff in my lesson plan. So these are just pictures or worksheets that need to go into my lesson plan. And those pictures are also hanging out here. Um, and then what we need to do is we're going to need to show you how to grab that free quest because good artist copy, great artist steal, let's go steal. So here's how you go steal. I'm going to go to my uh, home at the top. Here you see your library. Click on my library. Once you're in my library, this is a place where you can keep all of your things that you make to present your content to students within the ecosystem of Classcraft. And these will be boss battles and quests. Let me go ahead and just like try to wick my internet up a little bit and refresh it a little bit. Everybody who's experienced technology in 2020 is now much more understanding of things going slowly in, in tech um, than uh, we were before, which is really great. Glitchy internet, Zoom problems, forgetting to turn your <laughs> mic on. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the coming yeah. Being muted, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh no. It's fine. <laughs> we will live. We will make it. I'm not worried. So Hatcher's mentioning story mode. You can visit our story mode exclusive website at classcraft.com forward slash story. Uh, in that website, you'll find info about the seasons of story mode we have available. You'll uh, find the guidebook we have with the characters and the locations and all the pets. So if you're if your kids are big into the pets, they can get to um, they can explore where the pets come from, uh, learn a little bit of the pets backstory, which is pretty neat. <laughs> and yeah, that's I, fun. And we have also some. Um, some tips on that site with how to introduce story mode. So a lot of people, when you start Classcraft, you, you've probably seen the trailer. The trailer is your great intro into story mode. So mm -hmm. it's a way of visualizing how your students are going to start their journey. There we go. You can get here from within your account, but if you just Google Classcraft Marketplace, it's the first thing that pops up, the Quests Marketplace. And this is where we're going to steal from. And let me see if my uh, yeah my Classcraft is back up and running. And since I'm logged into my Classcraft, so let's check out. Let's see, am I a fool for it? Oh no, it's okay. It's working now. Um, so this is your library, and here's any review games, which you call boss battles that you've created and put in your account. And here are your lessons, so your quests. Quick into my quests. And you can see that if you really haven't done anything with Quest yet, it's going to give you this screen to let you learn how to use Quest or explore the Quest marketplace so you can find quests just to pull into your account. Here are the two that I just kind of have by default in my account. So a lot of a lot of folks are going to just have these two quests just kind of just to have quests just to see what they are. Um, and uh, then let's go ahead and go to top left discover lessons. When you click on that, that brings you to the quest marketplace that i was already at before and um so here's our quest marketplace we're going to tell you how to search and find mar marketplace quests for free it's all free you don't have to buy anything in the marketplace these are all a lot of these quests are created by other amazing teachers and um, some of them even get featured and the teachers get class craftified uh one we pick one a month and so that's pretty cool um and but what we're interested in is we're interested in finding the story mode business. So story mode is right at the top here. Click on that and it's going to bring you to classcraft.com forward slash story. As you go down through this website, it's going to kind of show you what story mode is and give you an idea of how to use it, how to get the lessons in your, in your uh, class. But I'm just going to show you right now. So I told you how we've built this epic long story that will go that will stretch out across your entire course if you want to. And we build it into little bite-sized quests that will last you a week each. And those quests then get collected into episodes of the story. And so all together, 
there are eight episodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in each episode, each, each part of that story is long enough to fill three quests. So here's the first episode and the first quest, episode one, quest one, the lost sprite. And you can grab it into your account just by clicking on import E1Q1, the lost sprite. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab this now. And you want to start with the first one because the story does continue from one quest to another. And so if this is the first quest I'm going to use in my course, this is the first one I'd want to grab. And then I'm going to select, I'm going to put this in my, uh, I'm going to put this in my demo class. You can put it in any class you want. And then later on, you can actually, uh, from within your library, you can add your quest to other classes. You can copy your quest and change one thing about it for another class. So you don't have to remake it from scratch. Okay. Karina, I think we're about ready to roll. We have our quest. Here it is. I have, uh, I'll show you how, like, you know, what we have got, what we've got here. This is showing me all of my students in my demo class. This is showing me that they will all start right here at the, um, at the intro. Um, by default, your quests are hidden from students. So you see this little eyeball at the top here, it's crossed out. That means this is not viewable to the students yet. If I click that, then I can show it and make it visible to kids. I don't wanna do that yet because it's not made yet. So uh, when it's visible, all of these students will be able to see this right here. This is what will pop up for them when they start the quest. It'll introduce them to these characters. It'll kind of like involve them in this learning journey as a character. And then they will move to the, the next part of the story, the next part of the, of the map. And this is where we can start putting in our, our tasks. So this is where I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer and time myself to build out a quest in 10 minutes or less. And I'm actually gonna use, in our class tools, we have a timer function. I'm gonna set it to 10 minutes and boom, there we go. Now, when I go back to my quest to work on it, or when you go anywhere else in Classcraft, your timer is at the top here, just ticking away. I love that because I could go on and do stuff with my class and like give out points to kids and things here. And my timer is still going, so I could be timing an activity in class. Okay, enough talk. Let's build. The timer up. is going. So the timer is going. <laughs> but let's do let's this. Let's go. <laughs> so here's the two quests I already have in my account. This one's invisible. This one's visible. Here's the E1Q1 that I just imported, currently invisible. Click on it and let's build it out. All right. So first of all, remember the introduction does not have a task. It's just story to invite the students into a journey. Now let's go down to Riddle of the Tower and let's fill out this task. So I'm gonna to go to my lesson plan and my first, my introduction is story mode introduction. My first task I'm gonna call Life's Elixir and I'm just gonna paste that right in there. And what I wanna have my students do here is to contemplate some really cool things about how much water is there really available to us on the planet. Now, here are these pictures that are hanging out in my lesson plan, right? And so I have these pictures saved on my computer. I'm just gonna drag and drop them right into this text box and let go. And I'm gonna actually have three different pictures I wanna put in here to really build some student interest in this topic. And now they're down here, not the prettiest way to see them. So if I click on these three dots, it'll let me use inline when I click that it pops the picture right in there. So the students will see that popping up right in front of them. And then I want them to scroll down and see this next one to have an introduction on how rare is water. And then I wanna show them this really cool picture of atomic water. And this is there gonna be what I ask them to do is to introduce this image to someone else or discuss with a peer in class. Now, how are they gonna discuss? Well, you've already seen you know we can put discussions in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a discussion. And I'm also going to add some text here from my lesson plan. And I'm going to show you how you can format this text in all kinds of wonderful ways. And um, let's go ahead and just kind of like format this out to make it easier for my kids to see what they need to do 
and not miss something important. So I've basically taken our prompts from here. I've typed them here. I want to make this a numbered list so we can talk about prompt one, two, or three. So I'm going to select those and then go to the top. And here we have a bunch of formatting options. I'm going to click this ordered list. Now when I go to the bottom, there are one, two, three. Then I want to make this prompts a little bit big and bold, so like a heading. So I'm going to go to this formatting button, click that from the dropdown. I'm going to grab header three. And now that's nice and big. And then I want to take this examine the image. That's really important. That's the main thing they're doing. I want to make that like a big, big header. So I'm going to go like header two on that one. And there it is. And then I want to make these just a bulleted list for the kids. So I'm going to select them and then go up to this unordered list, click that. And now they're a nice bulleted list. OK, now that's really nice. Now I'm actually going to want to have for my kiddos can be really helpful for them to see the instructions and the prompts also right there when they begin to write their discussion responses. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to click Save. Then I'm going to go up to my settings. And now I'm going to make this self-paced so students can do this at their own pace. I'm going to enable a class discussion here. And now I get a discussion tab. See, that goes away if I unclick and it comes back if I click it. Now in my discussion tab, I can actually start the discussion by pasting in that stuff, click send, and now my kids have the prompts right in front of them when they go from the task screen to discussion. It just solves a little bit of back and forth for them. All right, and that is how you build out a, a, uh, a task. Now I'm gonna kind of like stop talking quite as much and I'm just going to go through and go into a zone and make this, the rest of this thing out. So we, here we have the next part of our quest going down a list on the left. And for stories here, our task is going to be a drop in the ocean. And what we want to have them do here is appreciate how much water is actually on the planet. And then we're going to take them from there to understanding how much is potable or drinkable water, because obviously you can't drink the ocean. Now from here, I want to actually grab my video instructions. I'm going to drag and drop them on like I did before. And I am going to want them to watch a video, this video right here. And I don't want them to have to go out to um, YouTube. So I've got it right here. Here's my video. I'm going to click share on YouTube, copy that YouTube link, go back to my quest, and I'm just going to paste that YouTube link in here. When I hit enter, Classcraft automatically puts the video right in there. I absolutely love that. And then um, my video is there going to play for the kids. Now I want to add an assignment tab here because I want my students to do this. After watching the video, share your insights. So I'm going to click save here. Let's go to our settings. And let's make it self-paced and let's enable assignments. Now I get a date. Let's make it the 26th. 3 p.m. is fine. And then I'm going to put in some points for the kids to get just for turning something in on time. And I'm also going to enable an early submission reward for a day early. And I'm going to kind of put in some more points here. Note the students, if they turn it in early, they'll receive both of these sets of points, which is great. And then I'm done with that. That is all done and set up. And this will provide the students that assignment text box that I showed you earlier where they can drag and drop things onto there or they can just type in the box for you to see later. All right, let's move on to our third task. Again, we have story here continuing. Here's our empty task. My third assignment is going to be called, I'm going to call it Potable Possibilities. And we're going to learn how much of the Earth's water is potable. We're going to quantify, put some numbers to that information. And I'm going to need to get my some directions for the kids to follow here. Again, we're going to use those in line. And then I'm going to add a worksheet here for the kiddos. And I'm just that's just attached now. Now the kids can click that and save that to their computer. And then they will turn that back in. I'm going to make it self-paced, enable an assignment, give them some points. And let's make this the 29th, always early, 
points. I love giving those bonus points because <laughs> I love seeing who's going to do it. Who's going to turn it in early? I love that. And boom, that's done. Okay. And now the last part of our quest, we're going to, we're rounding out the story here. The our characters are working together on these three pillars. Now we're coming to our task. And what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to do some estimating work. And we're going to talk about estimating how much water do you use on an everyday basis. And uh, so I'm going to pull this picture in to my quest to Ooh, give some big nervous. <laughs> oh, I think the one we got minute 47. It. Let's go. <laughs> I think we got it. Oh, don't you worry. And then we're going to have. <laughs> Now I'm going to go extra slow no. to make Karina nervous. We're gonna do... <laughs> oh, I held that so long it kind of like weirded. Um, we're going we're gonna to add a worksheet for the kids to uh, work out some estimating. We're going to save that. We're going to go to settings. We're going to make this self-paced as well. And then I'm going to enable assignment for my kids to turn this in. Now let's have them turn this in on the first. Let's give them some points. Let's... <laughs> Make it early. Let's have them. If they turn this in on the 30th, they get bonus. And bada bing, bada boom. We're done. We've got our whole thing done here. The last thing is always going to be wrapping up the story, wrapping up the uh, quest, and then letting students know how to continue their learning adventure. And so that's already written in here by us at Classcraft. If you are going to use the story mode quests in the order that they are given to you, the next quest would be episode one, quest two. This was episode one, quest one. And um, then you can just have this sitting on your map. This is the full quest. This is my, if I click the quest there, then here's my quest. I can make it visible to my kids right now by clicking the eyeball and then show the quest. And I can share it with my um, colleagues if I want to. If I'm on a team of teachers, I could click this and I could proceed and click share your quest and copy that link. I could send that to Karina and now she could put this quest in her class. All of that done in less than five minutes, uh, 10 minutes. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> we made it. Made it. And we covered a little bit of how to share it out. And yes. if you're interested in knowing more about sharing, uh, we will be having, uh, sorry, our next live will actually focus on uh, different elements of quests, what you can do with quests, how you can make them work. Uh, we'll be diving into the marketplace a little bit more. So today was about showing you how quick uh, or how little time it takes to actually build your quest. It doesn't have to be intimidating. A story mode to make it a lot smoother, a lot easier, like Hutch was showing you. There's all these awesome little like tips and tricks, like dragging and dropping. I don't know how many people realize that you can drag and drop the elements into building and it just, it makes things so much easier. So that was amazing. I got really nervous. Yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now I'm just, I'm just kind of in the background, everybody. I'm just kind of showing you like quote unquote background gameplay, if you will, of a student playing their way through the quest that we literally just made and just put out for them. Um, and while I'm doing this, I'm, I'm also remembering a very common question that folks have that is, uh, what if I, as a teacher, just made this, my students are now in here, like I'm doing now in my demo class, like they're going through it. And I realize I forgot to put something in here. I really want to add, you can add whatever you want. You can edit the quest on the go. You, um, your students, my, if your students are anything like my students, they will find the missing pieces in your instructions, or they'll, they'll ask you questions about it, like something that's not totally clear. And that's totally fine uh, because you can go in and add that on the fly and it will show up immediately for your kids. The, the biggest thing they might have to do is maybe just refresh their browser to um, refresh it. But in most cases, my kids didn't even have to do that. And so this is, this is what it looks like for the kiddos. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, any other questions or anything like that, Karina? Uh, just, uh we're going to go through this really quickly. Uh, not a lot of questions. Wonderful comments. Thank you. Uh, Kim says, I'm glad I stumbled across this tonight. We're really <laughs> glad you stumbled yeah. across it too. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Kim. <laughs> and Mylene, I just love this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
It's <laughs> a great comment from Janice seeing things and like this is really helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome, Janice. That's why we started yeah. doing the live master classes. Yeah, and cool. um, if, if this is your first time in a master class, we are offering these free every two weeks, uh, at least until the end of this school year. And then we'll see if there's an interest in keeping them going. Um, but I think there's enough topics that they're worth they're worth uh, continuing for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Dave here. Oh, let me pop you up, Dave. Let's see. I like this. I'll have to create a quest this weekend. Yes, you do. Create more than one. Play around. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun, and, man. And uh, you know, drop, grab the story mode quests, drop them into your game, start playing around with them, see what you can do. And you can always um, grab some of the quests of the month to try as well and play around with those, see how they're built, see how the other teachers are making them. The quests of the month are, are some of the best examples of ways you can create um, quests that are engaging for your students. And there are all different kinds. So we have some that are very, very deep, and then we have some that are, that are much shorter. Um, let me see, oh, we got, there we go. Good question. Still need to figure out how to integrate Google Classroom assignments into your quests. So Janice, visit our help center mm. at help.classcraft.com. You'll find a lot of tips there. There's a lot of walkthroughs. Our team has taken time to create very detailed walkthroughs to help you every step of the way. But if you get hung up anywhere, we have a stellar support team, just an amazing support team. People, we're not just saying that. Those are comments from other people. <laughs> uh, we love yeah. our support team. But you can get in touch with them at help.classcraft.com. When you go to the page, there will be a little help pop-up button on the lower right-hand side of the screen. Just click that, and you can start a chat with them. And if it's outside of our operating hours, it will send them an email, and they will get back to you as soon as possible. So they can walk you through things a little bit. Um, but Google Classroom assignments, we'll make sure that we, we make a note about that and cover that in a future master class as well so that mm -hmm. you can actually see how it's done. And we have a... Um... Last summer, we, uh, Kinshasa and I, another learning team, um, actually the head of our, our learning team, uh, we did a series of remote learning webinars. And one of those webinars was specifically focused on using Google Classroom with ClassCraft. Um, and I, I believe those webinars have been recorded. They're still on our YouTube channel yes. or video channel? I'll, I'll drop a link in a few minutes. I can't uh, open oh. too many windows, but um, <laughs> Janice, I will reply directly to your comment with the link to that video so you can watch that as well. Yeah. And then Pete had a question about how well does this interface with Google Classroom? So so beautifully. Um, it's, it's amazing. We're actually a, um, a Google premier partner and we are integrated with Google Classroom. So in your account, uh, let me go back to my teacher account here. And then, uh, so once you're in your teacher account, you go to your profile and you can link your, your teacher Classcraft account to your Google account. Use the same Google account that you use with your Google Classroom. Once you've done that, you will be able to do all kinds of really amazing things, but in respect to in respect to quests, the instant that you're going to import a quest, like if I'm, excuse me, if I'm going to import the episode one quest two from here, I would actually get an interface that would be before uh, where I actually get the quest. So I would still tell it where I want to put the quest. But then once I click import this quest, I would get a new pop up here that would say, hey, you know, we recognize that you're part of your Google Classroom is connected to this. Um, pick from your drop down of Google Classroom classes. You can choose which of your Google Classroom classes would be the same kind of like the same roster of kids that you just that are in your classroom, Classcraft period one. And then you can it'll automatically pull up all of your Google Classroom cl uh, assignments that you've already made. It'll pull that from Google Classroom, have it sitting over top of all this and say, hey, do you just want to put these in? to these objectives of the quest right now. And if we had been doing that tonight, um, I have account, I, this is not my account that's connected to my Google Classroom, but I have one. And uh, maybe we could do that in the future if you're interested. But that, that literally takes, if your classroom classes already, your, your Google Classroom assignments are already made, 
then it's a matter of about seven clicks and your quest is built. And on top of that, instead of these little waypoints in the middle, you'll see the Google Classroom, like kind of like person icon, like the shoulders and head of that person icon in the middle here, so that you know it's a Google Classroom connected objective just at a glance when you're looking at your quests. It works really seamlessly. Uh, so like what happens is your kids will click into Classcraft and they'll go to this task, they'll click on the task and it'll open up a new tab that takes them to their Google Classroom where they can then do that assignment. And then they can come back to Classcraft, say, tell Classcraft they finished that and it opens up the next part of the quest and sends them to their next Google Classroom assignment. In that sense, it kind of organizes your Google Classroom assignments for your students and gives automatic rewards for completing them within Classcraft. And if students forget and they go to Google Classroom and they do their Google Classroom assignments first, and then they're like, oh no, I wanna get my Classcraft points for them. And they come over to Classcraft. Then as soon as they click into the Classcraft uh, task that's connected to the thing that I've already done in Google Classroom, um, they can just say like, yeah, I already did this task complete and they get their Classcraft points. So it's kind of like dummy proof in that sense in that like a kid can forget and start on Google Classroom and then come back over to Classcraft and just basically say like, yeah, I did everything already and get all their points too. Awesome. I hope that answers your question, Pete. Um, <laughs> <and> just <laughs> Thank you for this mailing. Uh, 30 minutes is just perfect to learn. Yay. And you still have energy for pra practicing quests. Good job. <laughs> we encourage everyone to go out and practice making some quests this weekend. Just, just one. You know, you might find it really like meditative to try to make a quest. It is and, kind ooh. of fun. Like it is kind of like there's an it's like you get your own little canvas and you can you can even build them from scratch if you want to by just by clicking on here and you can pick a map. You can write your own story. Um, ELA teachers will put like they'll they'll piece out their short stories that they want their kids to read. And that'll just literally be the quest. They just put pieces of the short story with some cool pictures they find on Google to like, you know, let the kids have a fun way to earn points while they read their short story on Classcraft. It also tracks like, because you can tell how far your kids are in your quest. Then at that point, you can tell how far they've read in their short story, which is cool. That's awesome. We'll be covering a lot more on quests uh, this month. So our next, let's see, our next masterclass will be on April 20th. Uh, and we will, again, we'll be covering more quests. We're writing down some of your comments from tonight and we'll make sure that we're going to show you some of the things that we talked about tonight so you can get a more visual um, insight into some of the stuff that we covered. Excuse me, my mouth is slowly starting to come back. Here we go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Only took 54 minutes, but that's all right. <laughs> so thank you everyone for spending time with us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We will be back on April 20th with another masterclass. So we hope to see you then. Leave any comments, questions, and tell us what you thought about tonight's masterclass in the chat. We're going to read them the rest of the night tonight and tomorrow. So until then, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Bye, Hutch. Bye, Karita. <laughs>